is funded by uh, IRAP. Uh, I'm not sure if any one of you uh, maybe know about IRAP, but this is a federal government organization that helps startups with funding and with some resources, uh, you know, to help them grow in the market. So they have funded this particular program. And uh, uh, this is going to be the fourth generation uh, that we have in this, uh, in this program. I'm not sure, uh, Meg, are you going to be okay to present now? Yeah, okay. So our program coordinator, uh, Meg Walter, uh, will do the presentation now. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, this session is recorded in case that you require uh, to have further uh, you know, information about this program. So I'll pass the word to Meg. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I am going to get rid of this so that I can. There we go. Okay. Thanks for coming. So today I'm going to be presenting on the Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program uh, from LATAM Startups. So just a quick rundown of, um, of our plans for today. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about um, why you may want to get involved with LATAM Startups, um, who, who we are, what our team looks like, some of the things we do um, in addition to the NIA program, what our impact is, and then the NIA program itself. Um, so here are some reasons why, uh, why we would uh, encourage you to get involved with us. Um, we're the leading, we're, we are a leading accelerator in Ontario supporting newcomers. We have supported over 150 startups from more than 20 countries. We have two unicorns in our portfolio. Um, I'll mention those in a little bit. We have a diverse team uh, and a diverse group of mentors as well. Um, we have an extended network in Ontario and in other provinces that you can uh, access through us. And we are partnered with other incubators and accelerators. So there are opportunities to be sort of directed to other programs after completing a program with us. Um, so we're a nonprofit accelerator in Toronto that works exclusively with international startups and newcomers based in Canada. Um, we are a designated sponsor for Canada's Startup Visa Program, and so that means that we have the opportunity to be a pioneer in bringing the world's top startups to Canada and helping them scale globally from Toronto. I'll talk a little bit more about the Startup Visa Program uh, as we go. So we were, just a little bit about our history, we were first incorporated as a nonprofit corporation in 2016, and we had our first cohort of startups in 2017. We are fortunate enough to have been supported by the City of Toronto and the Government of Canada, which has allowed us to expand some of our offerings um, in our programs. We're also a member of the National Angel Capital Organization, and as I mentioned, a designated business incubator under the Startup Visa Program. So this is a look at our team. We have uh, our board of directors on the left and uh, our staff on the right. And you can sort of, uh, sort of see and get an idea of, of who we have on our team and what a, um, what a diverse group we are. We're very proud of that. Um, so here's a little bit more about what we do. We support technology companies um, in their expansion process through different programs. And so these are um, the four main programs that we have. There's the Startup Visa Path. We have a corporate program and the uh, Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program, which is the focus of today's presentation, as well as specialized boot camps. Um, so just a little bit about our impact. Um, since 2017, we've supported, as I mentioned, over 150 startups. We've had um, over 40 companies go through our acceleration programs, and 20% um, of our co-founders are women, and we have two unicorns in our portfolio. Those, those are, as you can see in the bottom left, Kona and Cloudwalk. So those are two companies that have been part of our programs that have reached um, unicorn level of, with a valuation of over a billion dollars. Um, we have participation from 25 countries, and you can see sort of a breakdown there of uh, where um, startups in our programs tend to come from. We still have the biggest chunk from the Lat from Latin America, but we do also work with companies from all over the world. So including the Middle East, South Asia, um, even North America and uh, Africa, Europe, just anywhere you can think of. Um, and among our group of startups, we have um, 15 languages spoken by the co-founders. 
We have um, over 18,000 followers on social media. So that's, you know, gives you a, 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 um, an idea of the size of our network and 3,000 subscribers from, uh, th sorry, 3,000 subscribers from, uh, for our newsletter. So just a brief look, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go over this quickly. Um, this is a this is a look at our startup visa program. Um, it's not the focus of today's presentation, but just um, it's the so this is the program that um, startups go through when they're going from uh, from when they're coming from other countries and expanding into Canada. And we have a corporate program which is very similar to that, but it um, focuses on companies that do not require um, assistance through the startup visa program. Sorry. Oh, um. sorry, I went into there. I got it. Sorry. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about the Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator, since that's the, um, the focus of this presentation. Um, so this is, this is a program for um, companies that are, um, that are founded in Canada by newcomers. Um, and so that's a permanent resident or a Canadian citizen. Um, and uh, these are, this is for companies that um, are pursuing are technology companies pursuing um, intellectual property in Canada? We look at we look for companies that have demonstrated some traction. This can be through sales, but it can also be through um, investment grants or a user database. Um, and so, part of the criteria for the program, as I mentioned, is that it should be um, owned or co-owned by a um, by one or more newcomers. So these are permanent residents or citizens who have lived in Canada for. Um, it, it's, it says less than 10 years, but we, um, honestly, we take it on a case by case basis. Um, so some of the offerings of the program are, um, sales pitch and investment pitch preparation. Um, companies have the opportunity to work with up to four designated business coaches. Um, they can work with one designated, uh, industry expert. So that's somebody who, knows their industry particularly well and can help with the unique challenges of that industry. Um, there's also an opportunity, um, it's, uh, there's also an opportunity to work with um, a C fractional executive. Um, and so this is somebody who can work for an hour a week with, um, with the company. Uh, and this is somebody who is, you know, it can be a CMO or a CFO or a CTO, somebody who the company feels uh, is kind of maybe missing in their team and they can use that resource um, to, uh, to sort of fill in that gap. Um, we also have a, an opportunity for companies in Southern Ontario to work with a, um, a, a marketing uh, assistant and that person can also help them um, create a customized event. We, um, we also provide the opportunity for participation in demo day and um, they, they would be presented to our local community of, um, of investors and uh, government officials and other you know, people in our network. There's also business growth lectures. And so this is, these can be on topics like intellectual property or, um, or hiring or grants. And so those are just sort of general webinar style sessions to help the company, you know, learn and learn about topics that will help them grow in Canada. We also have a program that's in partnership with um, Tech Place, Haltech and Innovation Factory. It's called Acceleration Plus. And so that's an additional six months of acceleration support um, for companies in Southern Ontario. This program only costs $500 for co-founders. Um, so, and that's because it's, uh, funded by the, um, by NRC IRAP. Um, so we're going to take a moment to have a few 
Um, I'm just going to quit sharing for a moment. Um, we're going to have a to have be able to take a moment to hear some testimonials from a couple of the companies that um, that uh, participated in our program uh, with the last cohort. So um, I'm going to go ahead and call on Luis to go first, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Perfect. And you just wanted to share my my feedback, right? And and any um, my experience through the program, right? Yeah, just your experience in the program and anything that, um, any way that it helped you uh, grow your business. Definitely. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Luis Ortiz, and then I'm, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Infinite Harvest Technologies. So yeah, so we we joined the program um, last cohort. Um, we we initially developed all our uh, you know process and technology down in Latin America and Colombia. However, we knew that in order for us to access the, the the North American market and the global markets, we needed to you know to um, further develop our technology and and our IP. Um, and our intellectual property development, uh, and we decided that Canada was the, the best way and, and the gateway for us to do this. So we joined the program. As, as Megan mentioned, there are lots of uh, lots of support through um, through mentors, through you know coaches, through you know the different the different um, uh, training sessions that, that we we get to participate, and uh, and that we are part of that. Um, you know, also the community, you know, the, the group of companies that are all part of the ecosystem, you know, are great. So, you know, we're able to share, share experiences and, and figure out how to, you know, how to do different things. Uh, so through this whole process, um, we, you know, when we joined to, you know, we had a path in the way that we thought that, you know, initially we were going to develop our company in North America. However, through the different, you know, market analysis and conversation with coaches and, interaction with different people in the ecosystem, we uh, decided to pivot a little bit into how to adapt our value proposition to the North American market. And, um, and we're able to, to be a better market fit for, for what we were looking for here. Uh, the other thing that we, we were exposed through the um, ecosystem and through the boot camps, and I think Meg mentioned that there are so boot camps, we were able to, um, to span our reach into the um, uh, Niagara, Niagara region. So the, there are several boot camps, uh, you know, Toronto, the, the great Toronto area and there are surrounding communities because our solution is more focusing uh, food and agri-food. We, we are actually, were, through that program, we were able to extend into the Niagara region and that's where we actually established our operation. So, you know, a few, you know and through that, we are able to accelerate our development. Now we have a facility that is operational in, in Canada. We are developing our intellectual property. Uh, we were able to hire um, a couple um, interns or you know, in, in the technology side. So all of that's because of the exposure that we had to the program. So if you ask me just to briefly, you know, <laughs> compile what I just said is, you know, exposure to the um, to the to the uh, ecosystem. Uh, the mentorship and, uh, and training that you receive through the program and the ability to, you know, expand your network and pivot, pivot your company and adapt it to the North American market in order to, to expand. And of course, you know, uh, the, the team in Latin Stars has been great for, for us to, to be supported. So um, I think that's probably enough for me, Meg, and, you know, I, I'm happy to expand uh, for that if anybody needs it. Thank you so much, Luis. I appreciate it. Um, so we'll leave some time towards the end for questions, either for us or for um, either of our alumni. But um, before we get to that, I want to give Roshan the opportunity to talk about uh, his his company's experience in the program as well. Hey, thank you. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm the co-founder of Hailtail. Uh, we were uh, fortunate enough to be a part of the previous cohort of uh, LATAM. Uh, we started roughly around September and it was a six months program. Uh, that is definitely a value adding. Uh, the, the longevity of the program was very, very value adding for us because uh, as a startup, it's it's not an overnight thing. That's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it takes time, right? So when we started uh, uh, the program at LATAM, we had me, myself and my co-founder and one other person in the team. And we had zero funding, zero sales at that point. And by the end of six uh, months, the team had grown into 10 and we had raised funding and we had also started doing sales at that point. So there was a lot of uh, uh, support, which uh, the NEA program was able to help us 
uh, in terms of developing our business. Uh, <clears throat> me, myself, uh, as a as a newcomer uh, to the country and to the startup world, right? So uh, the program was very well catered towards uh, success of uh, candidates, like uh, candidates specific to us. So that was definitely helpful. Um, in terms of the the uh, the the facilities which were provided, uh, uh, the mentor sessions uh, were amazing. The fractional uh, mentorship, the fractional roles were also amazing. Uh, it's very key uh, how you use those mentorship uh, sessions. Uh, they uh, since we have uh, four mentors, one hours a month, one hour a month. Uh, it it's you could there is there is always a chance that you know uh, the, it becomes more of a update meeting rather than a, a strategic discussion meeting so it's very key on how you use those mentorship hours uh, what we did was that we grouped those hours and used those meetings specifically for digging into specific uh, strategic discussions so some of the meetings went more than one hour but uh, we were able to group those hours maybe have a meeting this month but not have a meeting for a couple of months but we were using it in that kind of a uh, scenario because that's what we found value in again different to companies different to people it it's uh, totally different uh, and uh, if uh, specific to uh, financial mentorship uh, from Veronica that was very value adding because our bookkeeping was all over the place. She was able to help us with our bookkeeping purposes. Uh, she was able to help us with, uh, you know, uh, giving us up, uh, doing all the estimation and everything. So that was uh, helpful too. Uh, and the introductions which we were getting to federal agencies like IRAP and other uh, investment investors was also uh, we even had an opportunity to talk with city of Toronto and other cities, which was all done through the, you know, the connections, which we got from LATAM. So yeah, as an amazing experience and, uh, uh, good luck to everyone who's going to be a part of this. <laughs> Maybe if you allow me, uh, Meg, just to add one, one thing that uh, is important that Mohammed mentioned. So when we uh, participated in demo day, after that, we launched a um, um, uh, financing round, and I, uh, actually two of the investors that are coming into this round are part of the network that Black uh, and Estera will introduce us to. So that's you know that's actually pretty value, a good value added for for everybody that is participating in the program. So, thanks. Thank you, thank you both for uh, for those notes. Um, we really appreciate you coming to share your experiences. So I'm going to um, go back to my slides just for a moment because I do have a few um, events that I want to flag before we get to our Q&A. Um, so just give me one second. Okay, um, so the first one, and I'll put this in presentation mode in just a moment. Um, so the first one is the Hamilton Niagara Boot Camp. I've got a couple of QR codes up if you um, if you want to take a moment to scan them. Um, the one on the left leads to the YouTube video of the info session um, about this program, and the one on the right leads to the application. So um, Hamilton Niagara Region uh, is working with us to um, offer a scale up boot camp program for startups that are seeking to expand their business in Canada through the city of Hamilton and Niagara region. Um, and so this is a, an event that's taking place during the Toronto Global Forum in um, October. And uh, it includes uh, access to, the, to that conference for three days, um, intensive sessions on expanding your business, and um, two days that are an ecosystem tour of the of Hamilton and Niagara region. The um, the other event that I want to mention is um, the business expansion live sessions. And again, we have a QR code there for more information. Um, and these are some free resources for our community to um, to understand the North American business landscape. So these are some uh, some sessions that we're going to be doing later on, and they're recurring throughout the year. Um, oh, I skipped the one about the conference, sorry. Um, and then on this Monday, actually, we have our um, our annual conference. Um, the theme this year is embracing a transition to Web3. Um, so that's an all day event on Monday. It's, um, you know, right leading up to Collision, which is next week. I'm sure many of you are aware. 
Um, so there's going to be um, six, uh, six, I believe, right? Um, big speeches, uh, or I shouldn't say speeches, presentations like TED Talk style, um, and as well as a sales pitch competition. Um, so that's a really good opportunity to uh, get to know our get to know our community and um, meet some of us. So uh, I just wanted to flag that for everybody. Oh, okay. Now we can. I can put that one back up. Okay. Can you all see that? Sorry if I went too fast. Yes, I can see right now. Uh, can can you? speed uh slow slowly because uh for the business expansion live sessions i came up here to hear about what's it about and i cannot see the screen just just a couple of minutes thank you yeah sure um so yeah the business expansion live sessions these are just some resources um to they're they're like free live sessions on um it, the North American business landscape. So there's a variety of topics. You can just pick and choose um, the ones that you're interested in. Um, and that QR code is going to give you more information on that. I don't know if, if you want to add a little bit. Okay. So, so this live session is only for Hilmington and Navarra region or open for the GTA? Excuse me. Oh, sorry, I was on you. Sorry. Uh, hi, Steve. My name is Carla, operations manager hi. here at uh, Startups. Um, so the boot camp, Palmington, Niagara, it's one week dedicated to the region. We have some webinars during that week. But these expansion live sessions are for whoever is looking to grow their business here in Canada. Um, there's different topics. Uh, if you scan the QR code, you have like six to eight different topics from uh, how to do market research, uh, how to incorporate, how to migrate. For sure, these are not as much applicable because you already, I'm assuming you're already based here in Canada, but you also have like sales and marketing in North America. Um, IP strategy, for example. So these are live, so these are kind of sessions that can give you an overview also about the ecosystem, the tech ecosystem here in Canada and specifically in the region of Ontario that can give you an overview, uh, like a broad overview, not specifically for Hamilton or Niagara. Great, thank you very much. No worries. Muted. Okay, um, so does anyone else have any other questions either for us or for our uh, alumni here? Uh, hi, I have some questions about the newcomer uh, accelerator program, uh, which is goes still very, very fast. About the uh, demo day participation and the C fashion exclusive aside, uh, because I, I saw quite a lot of uh, mentors, uh, market expert mentors, uh, also involved in the offers. So what's the difference between them? And the second question is uh, one of the speaker, uh, uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis, right? Thank you for your sharing. As he said that uh, after the demo day participation, there's a uh, good value, okay? So uh, can he uh, elaborate more uh, what the demo day is about and is it a pitching day for the for the potential investor. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, so I'll touch on the first question. Um, and so that's I'll just go in a little bit more detail about the coaching offerings. So there are so there's basically up to six kinds of coaches you can have. Four of these are business coaches, and those are on general areas like marketing, sales, um, finance, and uh, product strategy. 
Um, and so those, those coaches are sort of, um, not everybody uses every coach. It depends on the needs of the company, but it's the same group across the, um, across all of the companies that are participating. Um, the C fractional and the industry expert are a little bit different from that because they're, um, a little bit more personalized even. The, um, the industry expert, so that's somebody that is going to be in, in a particular area that the company is in. So if we have a company, for example, um, for example, Luis's industry expert was in, um, was in the area of like food and sustainability, um, just because that's related to what his company does. We'll do the same thing if you have, you know, a health tech company or if you have a fintech company. Um, we'll have somebody who's um, who's per has particular expertise in that area because there are um, there are challenges that are specific to those areas. Um, and then the C fractional, that's somebody that works a little bit more closely with the company. Um, so as I mentioned, it could be depending on the needs of the company, it could be a CMO or a CFO or a CTO. Those are just some examples. And so that's somebody that works with the company. Um, we do it for an hour a week. Um, and it's an important resource because sometimes, um, you know, an early, um, an earlier stage company or even, you know, some of the ones that are getting ready to really scale and grow um, don't have the resources to hire those roles themselves right away. And so this is a way that we provide access to someone on, um, you know, on sort of a part-time basis to work with that company and give them um, their expertise. And so that just depends, again, on the needs of the company. Um, does that answer your question with regard to the coaching? Yes, for now. And can I have the more details in the website about the offering? Because that's a front job offers your, your, yeah. your program. Yeah, and it's so long. I think it's also difficult for to explain yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. If you check in the chat, Carla actually shared a link to uh, to the website for the NIA program, so you can take a look at that. Uh, yeah, and also the access to acceleration uh, in, in your PowerPoint that it is in partnership with the CAPACE or some innovations, Humanton. So this is also open for Humanton's uh, regions or also is uh, eligible for the GTA regions. Yeah, it is. It's those are the the partnerships that we're with um, that run that program. Um, but it is open to companies located in southern Ontario. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then Luis, if you want to go ahead and yeah, answer the absolutely. Question. Yeah. No. Thanks, Stephen, for your question. Uh, yes, through the program, um, you get uh, coaching on pitching. So there is uh, several sessions that over the course of the program. Um, you know, you get, you know, you get coaching and feedback on your presentation, your presentation style, your communication uh, messages, and the key aspects of communication, right? At, at the end of the, you know, that was uh, at the end of the, towards the end of the program, uh, there's an opportunity to do a demo day where you actually get to showcase and, um, and share the skills that you learned through the program. And uh, what I mentioned in this demo day is the companies that are part of this, um, get to pitch their, you know, their their company, and uh, um, and the the ecosystem from Latin startups involves, you know, government officials, uh, people in the grand government, and also investors. So uh, during that demo day, we deliver a, a pitch, you know, a pitch uh, to to the group, and um, after that, after you know, after about two weeks later. We as a company, and that was our individual um, you know, need, launched a, a fundraising campaign for, you know, to raise some funds. So out of that demo day, we were able to um, you know, close on two investors that they were, you know, they were part of that audience. And, um, and, you know, and, and Miriam and the team were able to facilitate the communication with them. And now they're part of our investment group that, that we just you know, closing actually the next week. So that's, that's what I meant. Thank you. Uh, I heard that you you are from the food uh, industry, right? So, but but the program is uh, specifically for technology related uh, uh, programs. So you relate the technology to your well, yeah. traditional company, right? Yeah. So we so we are uh, you are in we are in the food sector in the you know in the in the feed sector actually, uh, but we use technology to develop our solutions. So 
that's kind of the what I mentioned at the beginning that we were focusing initially in the process to do you know to do food production and, and some of these things. However, when we joined the program in Latin Startup, we were able to take the full focus in developing a technology solution, a technology-based solution uh, to optimize and optimize the process, and also to be able to develop our all our intellectual property uh, strategy that is going to help us, you know, differentiate ourselves in the market. So, yeah, there is a technology component that uh, you need to have, and 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 here through the you know fractional CTOs and all these people, they help you find your way into that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you for your questions. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? No, I don't think so. Oh, we do. Yes, go ahead. Hi, my name is Sam. Sorry to join late. Um, I'm wondering. Uh, I'm wondering to understand, I don't know if you talk about it or not, uh, if there is any support or interest for legal tech. Yeah, yeah, we're tech agnostic. So anything that's uh, any kind of technology um, that it, the important thing is that it's innovative in some way. Um, but we, uh, in terms of the specific sector, we take we take anything that's tech. And we're working with a company right now. Thank you. In legal tech. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. We're actually we're working with a company right now in that in that sector as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, uh, Kunle. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Yeah, you did. Um, please, I want to. Um, my startup is in the idea stage. So, what kind of support do you give to startup in the idea stage? Um, do you want to talk about build? Yeah. Let me just transition over to Hi. Um, so for me, particularly, uh, one of the requirements, uh, the company has to have actually an MVP. So that's the minimum to work with the companies. But we actually uh, launched, we're still in pilot mode. This year, we launched an online program from ideation to commercialization. Uh, I can put the link uh, in the chat so you can have a look. Uh, right now, we already started the first cohort. Um, again, this is a customized because, again, we're still testing the waters. It will be a customized program in the sense that we'll make an assessment with the company, see where they are, what resources they have. Um, we can definitely assign the C fraction if needed. We will evaluate the type of coaching that it's needed. We also have a team of market research analysts that can help you through the market validation. And again, this is also applicable for the NIA. If you guys need to do more market research, even if you have already an MVP or go to market strategy, we can still help you with that or do a focus group, for example, if you want to go out and really get insights from your potential customers. But from ideation to commercialization, um, we have this online program. I think, uh, is it in September, if I'm not wrong? In September, that's when, and again, it's also the same time when we'll start the new program. We'll have that, uh, in case you want to apply, uh, I'll put the, the link in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, sorry. I don't know if you already talked about it or not. Uh, could you please share with us a use case of a startup in um, advanced level with a really existing product and looking for um, market penetration um, and um, in seed level kind of investment? Okay, I can share that. Okay. Thank you so much for that question. So in, in NIA program, NIA program, this is the fourth uh, you know, generation that, that we have right now, Latam Startup. So in that particular program, we don't have uh, C-level uh, you know, startups or startups that have reached that level just yet. We are hoping that we're raising a start here 
Luis and Haltel will get to that <laughs> in the next few years. But we do have experience with those that have come with us in, uh, you know, round B um, and they, you know, uh, getting to unicorn level. Uh, they did that in between uh, 21, 2022. Uh, they raised money uh, internationally, it was not locally uh, raised. And one of them actually was acquired, uh, you know, by a company in, in the US and then later on reached out the uh, unicorn level. Um, so for those two companies, those two companies were apart. Uh, you cannot hear anything. You, do you hear me? You guys hear me? Yeah. I, okay. I can hear you. Uh, can hear you. <laughs> problems uh, to hear me uh, but uh, yeah so for those particular two they were a part of a program that uh, you know Meg uh, talk at the beginning was the start of visa path uh, they were companies that were coming from outside to Canada and they uh, you know were a part of the uh, that particular program but that program has the same structure of NIA program and the reason why we have NIA program is because the government realized that our program, instead of Visa Path, was very good for international startups and they wanted to imitate locally that program so we can have same results with uh, the ones that we have had in the past. Um, so, um, yeah, those, uh, I'm not sure if you want, to, you want me to elaborate a little bit more about the two unicorns, but in the, um, uh, in the news part of our website, we have the story of them and I actually have a, you know, in YouTube um, a presentation that they made during the last LATAM conference uh, when we were presenting uh, the unicorns uh, that coming from the region. Uh, and they were sharing the whole story of how they become to unicorn level and how they did the path here in Canada. Uh, and now if you want to hear more about that, actually, Again, this morning, uh, we are going, it's this, this, this Monday, we are going to have our annual conference and all of you can have free tickets for our annual conference. So you can attend and, and you know, you're going to get an email about that, um, uh, but you can network with those that have already passed through the path and some that have been very successful uh, case studies that we have in, in LATAM. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, guys? Good morning. Yeah, Steve, you have a question. Yeah, sorry, too, too many questions. Uh, regarding the criteria, uh, I saw that uh, there are two criteria. I have some questions. One is to demonstrate the sessions, either full sales, investment grants, or number of users. This is question number one. Can you go into deeper? The second is uh, developing new technologies to pursue the IP in Canada. So can yeah. you have uh, experience, give us some examples for this? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the first part about, uh, you know, having sales or having traction in the market. Uh, IRAP, because IRAP is a type of institution that can help companies that are a little bit advanced in the market, they actually require to see that you guys are not in super early stage. So if you are, for example, like one of you that were uh, kind of telling us that it was an ideation, this is not the program for you. Uh, you have to have minimum MPP and have some uh, kind of commercialization already happening, either people that have been used your services, you know, uh, or they have been paying for what you guys have. Uh, so if, uh, if you can demonstrate us that type of traction, and you know, it depends from company to company, we can actually present the case to IRAP. Sometimes for uh, certain companies, um, for example, those are in the medical devices, uh, you know, or green tech, clean tech, it can be a little bit tricky to actually have commercialization and they require to have minimum in BP, okay? Uh, because those type of companies have a long cycle of commercialization. Um, it, IRAP is looking more for like, uh, for that particular part for the companies that are, for example, in a uh, software, you know, normal software that, that you can have, you know, uh, some traction to demonstrate. And uh, for the second question, it was about the IP. IP is very important for us. And probably now that, you know, Luis has mentioned that he has raised money, you probably know that most investors, they require to have some uh, level of intellectual property protection for your company. So we understand that for many companies at the beginning, it's very difficult and it's very expensive, uh, you know, to start, for example, a patent path or even copyrights, but we need to demonstrate that you will be able to obtain IP. So you may not have the IP right now, but you will be able to obtain IP, okay? 
if you don't have that, very difficult, you are going to raise money. So uh, that's, that's the reason why they require IP. Great, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, guys, any other questions that you may have? Let me say the collision. Yeah, um, yeah, we are going to say about collision. Okay. There's a lot of things happening and going on this week, as you can probably all of you uh, may uh, imagine. Anyone here going to Collision Conference? No, some of you? Okay, so if you are going to Collision Conference, we are going to be like, uh, you know, in booth E-103 <laughs> at Collision Conference. Uh, so very, very close to the alpha, uh, you know, that are going to be there. So if you want to have more uh, information or maybe have a personal conversation, Meg is going to be there. Carla is going to be, I'm going to be there. Like uh, the whole Atom team is going to be there. And of course, the conference that I already mentioned, I know the, the, the week is going to be super busy, but we are hoping that uh, we connect with some of you maybe in person. I mean, if not, just send us a note and we will be able to maybe, you know, provide a phone call uh, just to analyze your case and make sure that you actually are getting into the criteria that is required for this particular program. Um, any other questions, guys? Yes? Sam, you opened your, yeah, go yes, ahead. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was about uh, intellectual property, but uh, yeah, I think we can we can talk about that in next focus because this is the focus of our startup. Uh, I was laughing with with pleasure because I see the challenge for every startup to, to protect the IP and we work on it since seven years. So uh, I totally agree with you. IP is the is the key of, um, of business valuation. But actually, I'm challenging really the conventional way to protect IP. That's why, long story short, we're using blockchain to prove it. And I strongly believe IP should be free worldwide protection. I mean, so it's going towards that, Sam. Yeah. I agree with you. It's going towards that. It's going to open source, uh, you know. And I think like a blockchain certainly is is the hack in all this. <laughs> so uh, actually, you know, the conference on Monday will touch base in blockchain and Web three uh, development because we are trying also to communicate with the government in regards of you know what are the new trends in technology in this area. I know it's yes. going to be a hard transition decision if you have been working these seven years and you haven't seen it still like uh, any particular results on that part um i'm not surprised but uh, you know it's going there it's going there i, I agree with you yeah invest will be ip uh, instead of shares i'm strongly believe ip token <laughs> okay let's get <laughs> this is my favorite part i'm, yeah. I'm really happy to be on this, uh, this call thank you so much to give us this positive energy and uh this new way to incubate startup. Um, I was part of four different incubator and accelerator, and um, it's hard to find the best fit with technological startups because we are not too much like theory. We, are, we need some practical way, and we need to work with real business uh, and uh, person with a big experience. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like your approach. Uh, I, I personally agree with you. Uh, in particular, myself, I'm a big believer that everyone involved has to have a, somehow a level of experience having a business. Uh, personally, I have failed many times with many type of businesses. So I always say to people, just name one. I, I probably had that business in the past, uh, <laughs> and I had many, uh, a couple of uh, you know successes with uh, some of the businesses that I had. But I look for our uh, coaches to have the kind of same experience. You know, they are running their own businesses. They they can be in your shoes, guys. And that's the main uh, part for us. So we are a little bit unconventional from the normal acceleration process that you have seen probably in, in the others, which I respect a lot. But I also have to see this from the vision of the, uh, you know, startup. And uh, we know that it's not easy. <laughs> and it's not easy when you are a newcomer and you are kind of trying to fit in a new market also. Is, is uh, you know I've seen newcomers with 20 years in Canada and they are still you know pretty much trying to fit. Um, so guys, I really want to thank you. We are running out of time, but uh, you know we are putting this in YouTube. 
you guys are more than welcome to come to our office. You know, from September and on, we are com coming back with our Margarita's Thursday for those that want to come and do networking with us. We always have some fun at here at the office. You know, if you want to be a part of our community, please do. And any questions, just send us a note. Okay. Okay, guys. See you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Right. Have a good day. Bye. Good day.